By popular request from my viewers and also because I need to start using a bunch of these items I received, here we go with another classic in the mail video full of interesting stuff I ordered from the usual supplier AliExpress.com and I'm gonna start the video with these very cool USB testers from Fnirsi, I don't really know how to pronounce this uh, brand name uh, but you get the point. I have the FNB48P and the FNB58 uh, model numbers here and these two models are very similar in terms of uh, specs. I'm not really sure what the idea is behi behind having these uh, two separate models yet very similar specs but I will be doing a full in-depth video on these soon so we'll go into the details in a separate video. Generally speaking, these can do between 4 and 28 volts or uh, 24 um, volts for this model. Uh, between 0 and 7 amps, between 0 and roughly 140 or 156 watts for this model. Their claimed resolution is 10 microvolts, 10 microamps. They feature an optional Bluetooth connection, all kinds of USB modes. Uh, it can trigger all kinds of measurements and graphs shown on screen. They both look and feel like high quality USB monitors, so we'll have to go into uh, the details and differences between these two models in a separate video, but for now you'll find links to these in the description below. Next up I have a very small uh, GPS module and while I do have my bag of GPS modules, some new, some salvage, these newer uh, smaller GPS modules are kind of inexpensive so I still tend to want to use uh, these for some quick prototyping, testing of ideas, uh, you know, that type of projects. They have good reception, moderately good power usage numbers. And this one is in particular is based on the ATGN 336H chipset. There are multiple other modules out there based on the same chipset and it can receive GPS and Beidou signals. Uh, it comes in this very small package and which is like under 20 millimeters long. And generally these are advertised as a replacement for a Neo M8N module from Ublox. Now obviously this is not the same deal, not the same performance, not the same low power usage, but pretty close. Certainly a good option for prototyping work and for DIY projects. And it's nice because it also includes the required the voltage level translator chip, the LDO regulator, as well as the backup battery for the GPS in this small module. It's just the antenna that it is uh, like an external um, unit, but since it's included in the package, it doesn't really bother me. Same as always, there will be a link to this in the description below. The sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com, is a professional PCB manufacturer with excellent quality and fast turnaround times. From two layers to advanced, multi-layer, flex or rigid PCBs, PCBWay will have you covered. You could also try them out for many of their other services like 3D printing, CNC machining and manufacturing services in general. Check out their website linked below. In the previous video I showed some of these uh, newer USB Type-C based single cell lithium battery charger modules and uh, they were pretty nice so uh, I just decided to get more of them. The model I settled on is the switching type uh, with multiple functions in one meaning it can charge the battery at 4.2 volts but can also provide a 5 volt uh, output and if you're wondering if you can use this as a UPS for a small device you can but with a big caveat that is uh, it takes some time when the power is lost from the USB before it switches the internal DC to DC boost converter so you either need to overcome that with some capacitance to store the energy or just live with the fact that your device will probably reset before the 5 volt rail kicks in again. Oh and again I feel obligated to mention that these modules do have the required CC line resistors of 5.1k just to correctly negotiate power when plugged into a um, PD capable upstream port. And believe it or not, this is an important thing. Some modules you'll find on AliExpress skip on these resistors and that might lead to unexpected behavior uh, during operation. Next up, during one of my many free browsing sessions on the platform, this product showed up in the uh, recommendation list and it is advertised as a 100 watts car laptop charger capable of USB type C PD. So that's 20 volts at 5 volt, that's 20 volts at 5 amps boosted from an uh, input of 5 to 28 volts. So it must be a buck boost topology. So it is able to both boost and step down depending on the input voltage you supply it. Now this is obviously more of a DIY kind of module. You need to do some wiring, maybe install a fuse before being able to use this in your car. 
this is reflected in the cost of the product which is around $15 shipping included and I fear this is not a lot when we consider the power levels needed to achieve that 100 watts output so uh, really the main reason I got this was to further investigate if it can really output that 100 watts for a longer period of time and uh, how clean is the output as well as to maybe take a look inside of this thing uh, if it's not potted so to spare you a long review video where I test this to measure various parameters I did a few quick tests so here are the results next up I got myself a couple of these uh, fancy YC8 circular connectors and I got the 4 pin variant here and there's no particular uses no particular project that I uh, plan to use these uh, for but I wanted to take a closer look at them because um, there might be a good option there they might be a good option for when you're building some kind of industrial automation project where you might have some you know some cable interconnects between two boards or two systems and you want like a more uh, reliable high quality connector something like an RS485 bus a CAN bus or anything else like that and even though these are sourced from AliExpress they just feel like a super high quality connector and uh, these are kind of designed as a front panel connector so you need some kind of front panel or metal rail to attach these to you can't solder them directly to a PCB well unless you install them vertically in which case you could be soldering these to a PCB but um, you won't have any kind of uh, mechanical reinforcement so I think these are great for a panel mount type of uh, wiring scenario I would love to see like a 90 degree right angle version designed for PCB mounting with some mechanical mounting studs maybe coming from the same manufacturer that would be great but until I find that you can take a look at these um, following the link I've placed in the description next up I got a bunch of these uh, 30 amps Anderson uh, style connectors which you find on stuff like solar panels, power stations, generally equipment where you can uh, have a port that needs to sustain higher voltages and currents. And we encountered these on my review of the All Powers S300 power station. I didn't have any at that time, so I got these to make like a couple of test cables that I can use for future projects and videos where I encounter Anderson style connectors. They seem to be very modular. They go together like Legos and you also get the required uh, pin contacts included in the package. Next up, while on the connector category, might as well present this little guy, which is an automotive style connector, particularly used in uh, the VW group on various locations in the car, but I'm particularly interested in the rear view mirror wire harness, which is terminated with one of these. And I was thinking that if I ever get like a free weekend and I feel like doing some car mods, I might install a high beam assist option on my car by retrofitting a rear view mirror which includes a camera for detecting traffic and adjusting the high beam automatically based on that. Now if I look at the past couple of years or so, I really haven't had a free weekend so I'm not sure this idea of mine will ever turn into a real project especially since it depends on me finding that rear view mirror from a used car parts shop, they're not too commonly available. Next up, I ordered myself a um, NTC thermistor sensor designed to be waterproof to be integrated in the slab for underfloor heating monitoring. And this is a 10K3950 NTC type sensor. You get your regular two pins. And I assume this is kind of the standard uh, a thermostat would expect on its input. Like I mentioned in a previous video, I have not installed slab sensors when I did my underfloor heating but if you do yours I strongly advise you install some because regulating the temperature of the slab is going to increase the comfort level over regulating based on ambient sensors I overcome this issue in my particular system by regulating the water temperature and just running the pump and heater code marks always on it's not actually always on as it has its own thermostat for regulating the water temperature and only turns on the heater when the temperature of the water has dropped but by keeping the temperature of the water low and running the pump more often I basically get the same effect of you know regulating the temperature of the slab and keeping it fairly constant however by having one uh, multiple of these slab temperature sensors installed you get much finer control over that so yeah I just picked one up uh, out of curiosity there's no way for me to install these uh, now next up I picked up some of these cheap enclosures from AliExpress and they're roughly six by three centimeters and 
I thought I could maybe use these for some small sensor nodes but now that I got them I see that their build quality is fairly low the, the cover just has these thin clips for snapping them together uh, where I would have preferred to have you know at least one screw so I'm, I'm not too happy with these uh, plastic is fairly thin and flexible there are also these pre-cut slots for running wire through so there might be a few applications where these could fit but for what I had in mind like a custom sensor PCB this might not be the best choice next I picked up one of these compact two meters long uh, measuring tapes and it's, it's just six millimeter width on the tape it's kind of a keychain sized pocket type of tool for a quick measurements and I like having one of these on my desk or close by for whenever I need to quickly check some uh, dimensions this feels like you know, the perfect tool for the job instead of bringing out the big and bulky construction work measuring tape unfortunately this particular model is not a universal metric on one side and imperial on the other side it's just metric so maybe this is an item just for my metric viewers but still a nice item with a very nicely marked and clearly visible scale next up I ordered myself a bunch of different types of these um, self-priming micro water pumps and these range in size but they're all you know pretty small compared to my hand size they can be powered with anything between uh, you know 3 and uh, 6 volts uh, for some of these and up to 12 volts for the bigger one I believe so lots of options to uh, choose from when powering these and they will obviously be offering different height ratings as in how high they can push the water or different throughput depending on the voltage you apply and the reason I got this is because uh, I would like at some point to do a remodeling of this small balcony that I have to include some plants and some chairs for creating this nice coffee place in my apartment and I don't want to have to water the plants daily <laughs> I might forget they they might not survive very well under those conditions so I would like to implement like a DIY plant watering station uh, built around some of these pumps to deliver the much needed water in very precise quantity uh, and precise intervals to the plants and the smaller the needed pump the better because it will be using less power and it will be taking up less space I will of course uh, be based basing my system on an ESP32 and having it connected to my home assistant for remote control and monitoring but until then check out the links to these in the description below next up I have a couple of audio type modules the first one in purple color is a module based on the PCM5102 DAC from uh, Texas Instruments and this guy among other types of interfaces it can take an i2s input and convert it to a stereo analog output so this could work great if, if you have like um, an mcu that has an i2s interface like the sp32 and you want to do some audio projects but i also have this guy which is just a microphone plus amplifier module with not many specs given other than that the amp they're using is a tda1308 and the default gain is 40 db but can be adjusted by changing the value of a uh, resistor uh, present on this board so you would power this for something like 3 volts up to 5 volts and you would get an amplified microphone signal out and you can hook that up directly to a more powerful amplifier and drive a speaker or, or you can run it into an ADC and digitize that signal it's like a basic building block for audio uh, slash microphone projects next up I got some tools to show and I'm gonna start with this cheap no-name diagonal cutter that I got a few years ago for maybe two dollars shipped but gone are those days prices are much higher today uh, especially on shipping for the same product uh, but what I wanted to mention is that I used this guy for years cutting hundreds if not thousands of small gauge wire links through hole component leads you name it it has served me excellently until one day when I used it to cut some hardened a steel wire which damaged the blade I believe that same or similar damage would have happened if I used like a hundred and fifty dollar Lindstrom cutter to cut the same thing so in my humble opinion it is not helpful to use such expensive cutters for day-to-day -day jobs so I just ordered a few replacements from the same price category dirt cheap at least the red one seems to be identical to the, the one I uh, previously had same size and similar markings same build quality with the uh, blue one they probably come from the same factory but the blue one that I got from uh, real life seems to be a uh, step up in uh, build quality it just seems to have nicer metal nicer handles and 
generally uh, a better build quality probably higher quality materials used as well and for less than ten dollars i got myself a couple of tools that will likely last me at least another five years possibly more if i don't use it to cut stuff that you're not supposed to and don't get me wrong i do like high quality tools and i do love owning them i have a few of them but i tend to find that i keep them nicely in in a box they're like new and i just use the cheap stuff for day-to-day -day usage um, but I would, like to, I would love to hear about how you handle these things in your workshop. Let me know in the comments below. Next up for my portable soldering iron, I got this tiny stand to help me for those remote quick soldering jobs. And I find it nice that it also has a small cleaning sponge and the, uh, this little stand uh, made from wire just folds away to make it like slim to package. And I think this even fits inside the uh, EVA uh, carry case that I showed in a previous mailbag video. So this is like a quick and cheap uh, purchase that will most certainly improve your uh, portable soldering iron kit and just seems to be made from a plastic that you know looks to be slightly brittle, the kind of plastic that would be temperature resistant, which is nice, so check it out. In a previous mailbag, I showed how I accidentally ordered some SLPH screwdriver bits when I was instead looking for SLPZ bits, which are often used in electrical panel work, at least here in Romania, where uh, circuit breakers have that kind of screw heads. So I ordered another set, this time SLPZ, and I have uh, three pieces in this set that are 110 millimeter long, three different sizes in here, one, two, and three, and they have this insulation which um, would make them slightly safer to use i mean you should be working with power switched off but standards dictate that tools for electrical work should be insulated so they're trying to insulate them they're not doing a very good job uh, because this is like a very uh, thin insulation which can be easily uh, nicked like shown here so i'll probably slide another layer of shrink tubing over these but other than that they should be functional for using a drill for tightening of the uh uh, circuit breaker screws. One thing that certainly doesn't make sense to me is why they're built kind of different. Just look at this section. It's it's like someone is manually turning these on a lathe machine and they just don't bother making them all the same. It's kind of funny. I think this mailbag video is already long enough so I'm gonna have to stop here even though there's more stuff in my mailbag bin. We'll have to continue with uh, another video soon. Thank you for watching, don't forget to smash that like button and leave a comment below to let me know if you ordered any of the items shown here and I'll be seeing you next time.